for another episode of the Tech Informist podcast. Let's begin. Hello, everyone. I am Kevin. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we are going to be talking about the recent Pokemon Go Fest fiasco. Adobe finally announces that it is killing Flash. Apple is trimming the iPod lineup. Tesla finally delivers the Model 3. Walmart Super Nintendo Classic cancellations for all. And MS Paint. Is it going or is it staying? Welcome back, everybody. It is going to be another fun episode, episode 187 of the Tech Informist Podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I just want to get that out of the way. Normally, I don't thank everybody, I think, for listening at the beginning. Yeah. Usually it's, it's more of the end thing that we do when we probably should say, hey, thanks for clicking. All right. Thanks for clicking. We hope the show keeps on ticking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a fun, sunny, not nearly as hot day in St. Louis today. It is a nice change from what we've had lately. Yes. Because last week at this time, it was like 108. So that Saturday, we set a new St. Louis heat record at 108. And then just the other day, like a week later, we were five below the average warm temperature. Yep. It's a weird one. And it's funny. The past couple of years, it seems like August... Like, the beginning of August has been cool. A little milder, yeah. And then it'll warm back up a little bit, and then, like, it'll it'll be a little cooler, then it'll slightly warm back up, and then it'll just be like, hey, it's fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of nice. I'm I'm done with the 100 plus. Really, 95 plus. Well, everybody knows I'm ready for fall. Yes. As evidenced by today, you going and getting your first Oktoberfest at Schlafly. Oh, wearing yes. your shirt today. It's it nice. is a great, great time to be alive. It is. It <laughs> is. It's a lot of great fall brewers are coming. And we've got another interesting one that It'll I don't be know. It'll be controversial if, for most who are big beer snobs. I don't know if this one like just came out, but it seems to be odd timing. You would have expected this one to come out a couple months ago. Yeah, maybe... I don't know. It's weird how you're right. I, I haven't seen it before until today. Right. So perhaps it was out and we just weren't paying attention. I have to look. I don't know. But anyway, let's get started with the Pokemon Go Fest fiasco up in Chicago. Obviously, you have played Pokemon Go in the past, but... I still play casually. Mm-hmm. I'm... I don't know. I don't go out of my way for it, but... When I'm at work and I'm bored on my breaks, uh, why not? Let's see what's out there. What can I catch? Yeah. So a lot of people actually went to Chicago's Grant Park about a little over a week ago. And this was an official event hosted by Niantic for Pokemon Go Fest fanatics. And they're all coming in from all over the world. Which Uh, is crazy to me. It is. But there were going to be some opportunities to catch some pretty rare Pokemon that you couldn't find either in your home area or obviously were not normally going to be available in that Chicago area. Yeah, they're the legendary Pokemon, and the first couple available were Lugia, Articuno, and I think Moltres is coming up, and Zapdos. So like the legendary birds, essentially, if you're familiar with any of that. Um, it's a, kind of a big deal because the legendaries are really fun to catch in the actual game. But like, you can't really use them as gym defenders or anything. They're, it's more of a, hey, I caught this thing and it's really cool. It's like a bragging. You know, gotta yeah, catch exactly. Gotta catch them all. Gotta yeah. catch them all. It's exactly right. That's what it, it's all about. Mm-hmm. So people paid $25 for admission to this festival. Which, that's not That's bad. nothing. That's, Especially if you're in the area. Yeah, if you're in the area, that's fine. You ain't gonna pay for lodging and travel, airfare, stuff Could've like that. Could've took a train ride up there for that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're only, what, four to five hours, depending on who's driving. Mm-hmm. We'll just say that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, And it kind of went off, to me, not surprising because you're getting all these people. Roughly 20-something thousand people showed up for this thing. And you get that many people focused on one game, one application. 
hitting the cell towers in that area. Oh, God. You know there's going to be some kind of issues. I mean, it was a somewhat wide variety of issues. People were complaining. Lines getting in, lines getting out. And, like, when they would find the Pokemon and then go to tap on it, the the app would basically just like they broke seizure. It. Yeah, yeah, they broke it. So I don't know if this was really Niantic just not being fully prepared or... Yeah, it's hard to say, I mean, without knowing specifics because I'm not an engineer of any kind on any application. Yeah, I don't know network engineering and how all that works and handling servers. But I, I almost feel like they weren't completely ready because the player base has definitely fell, fell off. Mm-hmm. However, the player base is larger than what showed up there. I can guarantee you that. Right. So you would imagine that they would have been ready. I mean, that's what plagued the app or the game whenever it first launched was the fact that they had so many server issues. So, which made sense. You're getting all these new people hitting those new servers right off the bat. Mm-hmm. This game's been out for over a year now. You kind of should have your servers up to speed. It, right. Granted, maybe not 20,000 people in a very concentrated area ready because again i don't know but it still seems you would expect it to go smooth but now they're looking at well some of the people that went there i mean understandably upset if you're yeah. spending that much money on airfare all your travel expenses stuff like that it could get kind of expensive and then you get there and it's a terrible, terrible experience. Mm-hmm. Kind of like where we were talking about before the show, how I usually go to a beer fest. I'm not going to name which. And this year we're not going to go because last year was a very terrible experience. And Left a bad taste in your mouth. And that's not yeah. because of the quality of the beer. No. It was just the overall experience. Yep. So I can understand people being upset. I just can't understand people thinking, well, I want my travel expenses reimbursed. Mm, sorry, it's not going to happen. Because I don't know if I don't know if I've mentioned this on a past episode that some time ago I bought a pair of tickets to go see Adele for my wife in Phoenix. So we were going to fly to Phoenix for the concert. Mm-hmm. Obviously, spend the night or two nights and come back. Yeah. Well, come to find out. She's like, uh, I don't know if we want to go to Phoenix for it. And something else was coming up that we needed to go to. So I was able to sell the tickets to my friend who lives in Phoenix. Oh. And then find out the day before or whatever that she was having to cancel due to illness or sickness. I mean, she had laryngitis. She sounded like crap on her little video that she put out to her fans and she was all upset and stuff. I'm like, well, it's a good thing that we didn't go because we wouldn't probably been able to get our airfare and hotel yeah. stuff refunded That's unless crazy. we would have paid extra for the insurance. So, I mean, stuff happens. Mm-hmm. But if I would have went there, it's not like I would have tried to have Adele's people, well, you need to reimburse me for my travel expenses. That's a roll of the dice you know going into anything when you travel. Yep, it is. You know, it's like flying to a city to go see your favorite baseball team play or a favorite sporting team and oh sorry mm-hmm. it gets rained or snowed yep. out. Yeah. You can't predict that. You don't ask the team to reimburse your airline ticket <laughs> hotel room. <laughs> right. That's actually a really good example to bring it back to is like a concert, a sporting event. Those things happen. I mean, god forbid one of the singers kills themselves the night before they're supposed to yeah um yeah you know sing which recently happened in uh, uh lincoln park and yep. just a couple months before soundgarden chris cornell and, yeah exactly exactly which was what i was referring to uh initially but yes it all those weird things happen and like you said you just got to roll with the punches all right it's just life happens mm-hmm. and i don't know i i still enjoy Occasionally checking into um, Pokemon Go. I still like Pokemon. Like, Niantic hasn't swayed me. Like, oh, I don't like Pokemon anymore because I can't get on the app and use it or whatever. Like, everything has its ups and downs when it comes to getting an, into an online game. So, I don't know. I just kind of give them the benefit of the doubt and they'll work it out eventually, I hope. Well, I think the reason why they are definitely proving that they're trying to work it out is the fact that they've actually delayed some of the upcoming European festivals to make sure things are going to run a little bit better. 
over there for those? That... Probably a good call, because could you imagine people coming from different countries mm. to try to get to that? Yeah, so these are supposed to be held in Copenhagen and Prague on August the 5th, and Stockholm and Amsterdam on August the 12th. They pushed those back to sometime later this fall. No real dates, I think, have been announced. They've even got something scheduled for Japan on August 14th. And France, Spain, and Germany, September 16th. Those are still moving forward as scheduled. So, I don't know. It's just what happens. I mean, I've been to numerous sporting events here in St. Louis. And even here in 2017, your cellular experience at a concert with twenty five to 30,000 people still isn't that good. Yeah, especially being in an indoor building. Yeah. Typically, it just... It muddles the signal, especially depending on your carrier. Yeah, it's it's uh, one of those things we still got to work out. Yeah, I mean, technology is great, but it doesn't always work. That's the downside <laughs> yep. of it. It's not perfect. <laughs> All right, so Adobe doctors have apparently given Flash two years to live. Thank God. I was wondering when that... <laughs> butthole is gonna die no i i'm so done with flash it runs so terrible on basically everything now it feels like and it just why use it when html5 works on mobile and everything else so much better well kind of like windows xp not everybody wants to update their website people are afraid of change software and stuff like that yeah yeah they're just afraid of change they're afraid to take it in the 21st century it's going to cost me money. Well, yeah, it's going right. to cost people money. Got to spend I mean, money to make money. It's one of those things, but uh, this is this has been a long time coming. I mean, we had um, a couple months ago, I want to say now, we were talking about how Chrome was going to start, you know, ceasing Flash players mm-hmm. and stuff on their website. And they're probably, well, they are one of the biggest web browsers right now. Oh, yeah. I so I'd say Chrome is probably the most used yeah and you know that being said if chrome says they're killing flash that kind of puts it on life support right there and then beyond that you know i mean microsoft's never really been a huge fan they've been hard pressed to push you know flash away Mm -hmm. and put html5 in the front and center that's just one of those things you know that that they've been pushing and I don't blame them because it works great on Xbox. You can't run Flash on the Xbox. Right. But if you go to an HTML5 website, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Safari have already been blocking Flash over the past year, but Adobe is now planning to just remove support for it fully by the end of 2020. And then their quote is, we will stop updating and distributing the Flash player at the end of 2020 and encourage content creators to migrate any existing Flash content to these new open formats. Which, you know, number of gaming, education, and video sites still use Flash. And Adobe says it remains committed to supporting the technology, again, until 2020, alongside partners like Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla. And Microsoft is planning to disable Flash by default in Edge and Internet Explorer in mid to late 2019 in full removal from all supported versions of Windows by 2020. So, if you are Within a web... In the next year, in mm-hmm. a half, I want to say, Flash will basically be dead already. Yeah. So, I have a feeling that a lot of companies slash websites will have to move fast. And just bring all their stuff over to HTML5. Yeah. One of my favorite music sites um, still uses Flash, so they'll have to kind of get on it. Yes, they will. So I know this really affects a lot of schools. I mean, they've got a lot of you know kids' software and stuff like that for mm-hmm. learning. But you know, maybe it's time to just get some new software. I'm sure there's something bigger and better out there. Definitely. Time to update the programs and the curriculum. Mm-hmm. Time to move forward. Welcome again to the 21st century. (laughs) Speaking of welcoming people to the 21st century, I think it's about time that Apple has killed off a huge line of, well, music players that are portable, that people don't need anymore because they have their phone, which has cellular data and a lot more storage than they used to. Mm -hmm. And by that, we are definitely talking about the iPods. It's kind of a coming-of-age thing like the ipod has run its course 
and it's arguably one of you know Apple's best selling products but mm-hmm. the iPhone at this point is superior in every way it does everything you need it has all the storage you need it's going to you're going to get a smartphone anyway and uh beyond that you know it's i don't know it it's bittersweet it's like i understand that they're not selling a bunch of them and yet i almost feel like oh man i still want to keep that standalone product for that thing but not really anymore i understand users wanting to have something very lightweight portable just to wear while they're working out whether it's running just exercising in general or just whatever or just to take on a camping trip and just queue it up because the battery life on those things is pretty amazing you know you're going to get numerous hours as opposed to what you're going to get on your phone and so with your phone you have to put all this music and stuff on there same thing with an ipod but right yeah so the nano and the shuffle are indeed discontinued and will eventually be removed from sale in retail stores too and it looks like they're only going to sell one version of the touch yes in black possibly just one version but it's going to be only in 32 and 128 gig models what at reduced prices ah uh, is that 32 huh why yeah. bother why bother with it really why like that is such a waste of time i don't understand apple sometimes yep. yeah it is that that's that is sort of frustrating slash that kind of angers me it, it affects <laughs> me in no way but 32 come on <laughs> no, I mean it is still a lot of music, but then on the other hand, it's not. So, anyway, if you've got your iPod Nanos and Shuffles, and you've been looking for a replacement, if you see one, better snag it because it ain't gonna be there for much longer. So, a year and some change later, Elon finally delivers the Model Three. Two customers this past uh, Friday, mm-hmm. which was the 28th, I believe. I believe so, yes. So they, in their initial run of 50 cars that they made, production cars, 20 were for uh, production purposes, for retooling machines and ramping up production, and 30 they handed out to customers. I would say... And I know a lot of people disagree with me, and maybe I'm a little biased, but I would say that this is arguably one of the most important cars ever to come off of a production line, solely to the fact that we are slowly in transition from you know, fossil fuels to electric, and mm-hmm. you see that is very evident to the kind of cars that a lot of car manufacturers are making right now. Lots of ideas for plug-in hybrids right now where you kind of have part battery, part oh, gasoline. That makes sense for somebody like me right now. I, I don't have, you know, readily available electric in a, an apartment right now. In 20 years, that might be a different story. Right. But, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty short unveiling. But the stuff that they did show was, well, what we've been waiting for. Um, right. The first model that is going to be released, it's the $35,000 one. It's basically, it's just rear-wheel drive. Um, it's I don't remember how big the battery is, but it is 220 miles for that battery. You're, it's kind of your base model uh, production. That's what he's going to be pushing out right now. That You know, make it super easy, streamline it. The other model which is the one i would prefer is forty three thousand dollars it has the bigger battery 310 miles on one charge that's pretty Pretty good good for a smaller car than the model Mm -hmm. s that's comparable to what a lot of miles per gallon or miles on a tank a lot of smaller cars get now yeah that 300 marks kind of that magical like oh that makes me feel better that kind of mark for a, couple, a lot of people. Yeah, that I can. I mean, some people can get a couple weeks out of that single charge. That would be. Or me. some people can get, for like me, I probably get like three or four days, depending on where if I'm coming downtown. Yeah. Again, but I mean, it's it's incredible stuff, and the thing that kind of still blows my mind is, you know, this small tech company from 
California that everybody said would fail just had like one of their um again just had one of the biggest releases for maybe any car ever and they're starting to you know ramp up production push them out and it's exciting times especially yeah, if you're a Tesla fan yeah i think those first 30 units went to employees that were able you know, which they probably got he, first dibs on purchasing. yeah which he sort of said you know if we have problems with them we would rather them be in house, so we can deal with them immediately. Understand the problem, fix the problem. So as we're ramping up production, the customers that get them further and further away from where they're making them, you know, they're not going to have as many issues. All right, and there will be some bugs. It's just undeniable. You look at every, pretty much every auto manufacturer. Yeah, when oh, they do yeah. a model change, go from one product design to the next, but keeping the same brand name. Always problems. There's always something. They always say never buy the first model iteration of any new. Right. Um, like my car is the first year With when the they redesign. started making that redesign. I didn't and have a problem with mine, really. So. They had problems um, initially with the headlight shaking because mm -hmm. of the way they made the headlights in that car. So there is a retool kit where you have to drill into the side of your rail on your car, you know, the thing that protects you from crashes. To stabilize and it. Yeah, and put a stabilizer in there uh, to stop them from shaking. That's something I actually did to my own car, only because I knew about the uh, the fix. Right. There's a few other things here and there. But again, it, it's to be expected. It's a car manu. They are a car manufacturing company. Like, they, yeah. they make cars. It's just the cars are much different. Well, not much different. A little different. Well, if you look at the interior of this one, it's a lot different because the only thing you see is a steering wheel and the 15 screen touch screen. and some that's cup it. holders, and that's, that's about it. Kind of it, yeah. But it makes sense because every Tesla being manufactured from here on out is capable of full autonomy, which mm -hmm. is incredible. Not any other car manufacturer out there can claim that no. about their entire line. In fact, speaking of other car manufacturers, they were showing a like crash test of one of the highest highest rated cars in the world the volvo was it s60 something like that i know it was a volvo so they do like one of those side impacts like you're hitting a let's say a telephone pole five star crash test like safety it gets five stars and everything and yet that pole impacts and enters the driver's seat whereas in the model three I mean, it's like just it just kind of like goes in so far and then it like pushes and it sort the car. of bounces out. And part of that is due to the battery being in the floor. The battery takes some of the brunt of that. It's part of that shock absorption. But that kind of seems dangerous, though, because if that battery were to like burst or something like that, get punctured. Well, but I'm sure they went through. Yeah, I numerous. Mean, they've steps they've for had plenty that. of uh, car crashes. And I mean. Battery cars are less likely to catch on fire than cars with combustible yes. liquids. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. True. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait to start seeing these things start running around the area. I cannot wait to see one in person because I, I really have no concept of how big or small this car is. I just know it's 20% sure. smaller than the Model S. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure it's going to be kind of regular sedan size it's, it's a little four door i'm hoping somewhere in the like um size range of like a nissan altima or something yeah. i bet it's not smaller than big. your car yeah I, that would be great mm -hmm. because i can deal with that i can't like model s is almost too big for me mm -hmm. it's a great car it just seems long i just i don't like big cars <laughs> i mean i would take one in a heartbeat but oh i would not complain <laughs> I, mean, I mean a model three would be so cool one day digging, I'm digging will, a smaller car right now yeah one day one day i will definitely own a tesla mm -hmm. it might be seven years old but hey i have one yep <laughs> you betcha no i definitely would like to get my hands and on one and check one out so definitely going to be keeping up with the tesla meetup group here in st louis to see when somebody does get one and brings it to a a meetup because I'd like to go check it out. Yeah, actually, that's a good call. I will definitely keep in touch with those guys, mm -hmm. see who's gets what. All right. So last week we had mentioned that Walmart may be doing all the 
pre-order canceling for the Super Nintendo Classic. That, and how we weren't affected. Yeah. At that time, we weren't affected. But like two days later, it was official. Yep. All of those pre-orders canceled. Including ours. Including ours. Oh, the amount of ra- the amount of rage. Yeah. Oh, Walmart. Shame on you. Right. Is number one. I mean, getting everybody's... It, it reminds me of that that car commercial with the guy, the fisherman and the, the two women in the clothing store. Oh, got your dollar. Oh, you almost had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, this... Move faster. This just reminds me of why Amazon is doing so well, because their customer service is second to none. Oh, yeah. And I feel like with Walmart, they could have at least done something for the people that... Tr- thought that they had it. I was like, oh, this is it. This is all I had to pre-order. I'm good. I'm I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about it anymore because it's kind of stressful right now for it is. the people that really want these. Because you know you're going to have to be fast. You find out, and if you are if you find out 10 to 15 minutes after pre-orders it's go over. live, you're probably going to miss it. <laughs> game over. Yeah. yeah. Game over. See what I did there? <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it's the thing. You're going to have to be fast. So, I mean, I've got notifications set up to go off on my phone. I did finally cancel a lot of those. Tw- I kind of like, now nah, I'm done getting all these little tweet notifications I, yeah. while I'm in the middle of a game or something like that. Totally. Like, stupid. I I don't envy you because I don't think I could do that. No. Um, I'm kind of living but off they're not of... audible notifications. They don't even make the phone vibrate. It was just, it would just pop up on the screen. Oh, okay. Like Maybe I could do something like that. So I've got it set up now towards like now and stuff. Something more get text notifications yeah which that came in handy for another little bit that i'll mention when we're done talking about the super nintendo classic but what pit blatantly just pisses me off is the fact that nintendo in 2017 can't take five minutes to put out a statement to north american customers we understand the frustration we know the anticipation and how much you all are looking forward to this release we're going to do our best to have you know, so many available at launch. Mm-hmm. They're going to be available for pre-order at ABC, XYZ, yep. these locations. Here is why we haven't opened up pre-orders still over a month after we did on Amazon UK, other UK stores and it's a, in Australia. It's been like that, you know, for over prior. a month. Well, yeah. um, the NES the NES class was no the same way. I mean, I think Target had it for a very brief window. Sure. But... Then they do with, I mean, it, they we know they can do pre-orders because the Nintendo Switch pre-order I thought went very smooth. Once yeah. it went up for pre-order, it was still like an hour or so after I knew it went went live. I'm like, yeah, I'll just go to GameStop if I can go to GameStop dot com and still get a pre-order in for the Switch. Great. If not, I can live without it. Here's right another thing that I don't understand that I wish more companies would do more of, i.e. People like Tesla, they do pre-orders, well, let's say a year in, in advance. That's fine. They know how many they need to make at that point, and then some, because you'll have all the people who have pre-ordered, they're the ones that are in tune with your product, they should get first dibs. When Instead of like the people who are just casually walking by like, oh, I think I'm going to get that. It's, it's one of those situations. It's like, I understand that maybe they still want it too, but... Maybe people who pre-order should have first dibs, and maybe you should make an allotment of all those pre-orders of people that wanting to buy. Because the people that don't buy those pre-orders, guess what? You're you're not going to lose your money because they're going to be gone. They'll right. they'll disappear off shelves very quickly. I mean, it is Nintendo after all, and we already have wind of a Nintendo, Nintendo 64, 64. and I guarantee you that. Uh, especially people in my generation, like that was really when we started to grow up and understand, hey, gaming is awesome. This machine is awesome. I, I will definitely, definitely want to get that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just frustrating. And it's like, I mean, I know Nintendo knows how to do pre orders, they've proven it. Yep. They apologized up front of when they announced the Super Nintendo Classic that we've learned from the NES Classic. You know, we made some mistakes and the whole, we underestimated the demand for it. Clearly. And so we're going to step up production, make more units available, launch it earlier in the season. 
and God, just get the damn pre-orders out there. Make it available. Just let us know. Put out a statement. I don't see any reason why they couldn't just even just hey, sign up if you're interested for a pre-order. Pre, you know, pre-order or whatever. Right from Nintendo's from website. Nintendo website. That way, they understand what kind of mess that they have going. Like yeah. what kind of what amount they would need to produce in order to make people happy or at least much closer to what we are now because from what i understand they didn't even make like half a million of the the nes classics it was probably closer to three hundred thousand, and uh that's that's not a lot so i don't i don't know i still say shame on walmart in some aspects because right. it, somebody clicked the button yep and it doesn't just automatically do that. They either scheduled it wrong exactly. or something stupid. Exactly. And for all those people like myself who signed up for the very first time on um, for Walmart alerts and stuff to, like to that. use anything on Walmart, to buy anything online at Walmart, I can assure you that if at all possible, I will not be buying that from Walmart. Oh, yeah. Because now I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm gun shy. Yeah. Will it get fulfilled or not? I don't know. Now, Amazon, on the other hand, I have not had any problems with since I've... Um, I know some people have with Amazon, but I have more faith in Amazon than I do Walmart. Right now, yes. <laughs> and if you go to Nintendo.com slash Super dash NES dash Classic, that page still has not been updated. It says, System Available September 29th, 2017. Retailer info coming soon. So, so they months. haven't even updated that. Two months away. Yeah. It's two months away. And it was announced over a month ago, and they still haven't updated this page to say, yeah, here's retailer info coming soon. Mm -hmm. If it's FCC approval is what they're still waiting on, let us know. Like Microsoft. They're like, hey, we know you guys really want to pre-order this thing, but we didn't get approval. And then just this week, hey, we got approval. It's going to be soon. We're lining up our ducks you know, d don't worry. We'll let you know as soon as everything lines up. And at least they're talking to their fans, whereas Nintendo kind of keeps us in the dark. And don't get me wrong. I'm a huge Nintendo fan. Mm -hmm. I love Microsoft, but I'm a huge Nintendo fan. That's where I grew up. Well, and So it, it's just sort of frustrating to me. Oh, it's definitely frustrating. <laughs> I know I'm still going to try to buy one. Oh, yeah. But it's still, it's like, damn. and I think that's what Nintendo sitting there thinking. Don't matter. They're still going to buy it. We're still going to sell every single one of these we can make. Yep. Regardless yep. how PO'd people get, they're still going to buy it. They can't help themselves. I mean, <laughs> all of that is true, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just asinine that they can't put out, a, take five minutes to p type up a little statement. Here's what we know. This is, here's the information. Here's an update a month in. Here you go. Here, here's a little update. Just give me another little carrot to dangle out there to Okay. Good. That's all I need. Yep. Do that and I will shut up. <laughs> I will shut up. Back to NES Classic though, real quick. There were actually some that were made available, I believe it was yesterday, so Saturday, in a few variety cities like Chicago, Atlanta, and a few other cities around the country. They were like small little truck kiosks. Yeah, or these these Amazon like truck whatever it is this new little thing that i've never seen before and so they made it available through that and was like well that's pretty cool but then again it makes you wonder how did they get this kind of a stock to make available for something like this if production stopped as far back as they said that it was going to i guess amazon just held on to a whole bunch of these which again leads me to this next point back to those um, text notifications that yeah. I had signed up for. I had also signed up for them on all the stuff about NES Classic. Just the other day, I think it may have been Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I can't remember. I just get this random text that says Amazon has the NES Classic controller, like the actual NES Classic controller that was more difficult to find than, than the, the actual system. Than the actual system. Yeah. That it was a, actually available, so I thought, well, shit, I'm going <laughs> to, I quick, I mean, immediately clicked that link in there and was able to order one for 10 bucks, which was the price that they were going for. And then by the time I shared it out with you guys in a couple minutes after that, uh, 
They were gone. They were. Yeah, it was back up third party resellers for forty three bucks. Like, yeah, Jesus, that went. Would they have five? I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's like where where did they find these? Well, and that's that's the weird part. Like you have seen this from a lot of companies recently. I think Geek did a, a very which I'm crazy bundles. Yeah, yeah. Of it's garbage things that you wouldn't want. But guess what? It's kind of the pay gate that you need in order to get these things. And you know, if you were to ask them, like, oh, well, you get these one wonderful things with it and it's like no you're selling off your garbage you're just doubling the price of the nes classic basically. exactly yeah i think the cheapest bundle from that sale was like 135 something yeah like that sounds about right and it's like i don't really want some of this stuff but if i hadn't got if i were not able to get one i probably would have jumped on one of those bundles yeah i unfortunately yeah I mean, I know that's how Justin ended up getting his NES Classic was yeah, through true. a bundle from GameStop. Much cheaper bundle, but yeah, it was only like an eighty or ninety dollar bundle or something yep. like that. But it was how he got one. I didn't need this extra controller for my NES Classic. I just, it was, I just wanted it. It's like I could never find one. Yeah, I know. It was harder to find than the system, like we said. <laughs> and it showed up yesterday. And yeah, I opened it. I'm like, well, I'll be damned. It is the actual controller. All short cable and all. Short cable and all, yeah. So now if I want to play button lag free, because with, even with the 8 bit though controllers, the mm-hmm. wireless, the, there's still some button lag. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I think with these, it kind of helps alleviate some of that. I might just have to get a long HDMI cable and call it like a day. That. Just call it a day. And get or get some extension cables for the controller. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Either way, come on, Nintendo. It's been a month, North America. Get it squared away. Mm-hmm. Next up, the other thing that kind of got people all excited, or I don't know if you'd call it, not necessarily excitement and, ooh, yay, can't wait. But, no, we can't, no is that Microsoft was kind of hinting around that you know it's just going to be paint 3D not paint and which lo- mind you I actually teach that class at the store paint, the 3D. paint 3D and I love that program play around with it a little bit and you can actually do some pretty cool stuff on it and especially if you have a surface or a pen like I've I've drawn some pretty good stuff, and I'm not by any means an artist, <laughs> but I've drawn some pretty cool stuff on it. Nice. But anyway, they have decided to keep Paint around, and they're just going to put it as a separate app that can be installed through the App Store for those people that like to live in the past or just feel that that whole Paint UI works better than Paint 3D. I don't know. Yeah, the for the people who like Notepad more than uh, Microsoft Word. Yes. <laughs> now, I will admit that within the... I mean, it has been probably three, four months since I've used Paint on Windows 10, and that was just to create some logos for my NES Classic, for my little system folders with the icons and stuff. It's really the last time I used it, and that was just to change it from PNG to JPEG or whatever it was. Sure, sure. That was it. I don't ever use it, so I'm curious for those of you listening. Are you fans of paint? Do you not like paint 3D? Would you have been really upset if Microsoft would have said, yeah, it's time to move forward, no more paint? Gone. Kind of like with uh, Windows Media Player. Yes. Oh, God. Rip that Band-Aid right off. <laughs> There's probably still some people out there who's going to be crouching down and just rocking back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's where we are. And it's hard to believe that Windows 10's been out kind of for two, two years Two years, now. yeah. Isn't that something? That went fast. Two years this, well, actually this week, I think. Yeah, right about now. Yeah. It's hard to believe, but here we are, two years later, and still new builds and new features and functionality, and I think now you can even go from, was it Android or iOS, have a something that you're looking at on your phone, and you open up the web browser on your Windows 10 machine, and like it'll open up that page on your computer web browser. 
like you can do with I know with Mac OS and iOS it works that way yeah it's like yeah cool nice welcome bring it I love all the interconnectivity and easy handing off of one service to the next yeah definitely for similar functionality may as well All right, time for app entertainment hardware picks. I don't really have much this week. Um, I do have one thing to add that I forgot to put in the show notes, and Mm -hmm. that is, and I'm sure most of you have seen it by now, but I'm new to it, and that's Westworld. Kevin, you should watch Westworld. I've heard it. I think you would really like it because you are uh, a Western person. Mm Mm-hmm. It's got a little western, a little sci-fi. It's uh, it's it's pretty good. good. Yeah, and it's got some great, great characters. Um, there, I think there's a second season getting ready to come out. It kind of surprised the heck out of me that Sarah actually went out of her way to watch the first episode to see Mm -hmm. if it was something she would watch with me. Because I've been saying, "Hey, we need to watch this. We need to watch this." Because I keep hearing how good it is. She's like, "I don't know. I don't know." She doesn't like westerns, but that's beside the point. Um. So we finally watched it, and it's great. I definitely recommend checking it out. And I think that's about the all I have on my mm-hmm. end. Other than, last last minute thing, on the Xbox, just like I told you about a month ago, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered is here, and it's you can buy it now. It's $40. I have not bought it because I'm going to wait for it to drop like 10 bucks at some point. Mm-hmm. I did buy the DLC while it was on sale this week on <laughs> Games with Gold, so I got the DLC. I'm just... Wait for the real game, the access my DLC. <laughs> Yeah, I'm either <laughs> old that and I'm a little tight on cash, so I'm just kind of yeah, penny pinching, I guess. You know, I, had I had had a few more bucks or something, or had we not a went on a trip, I might have gotten it already. Right. But, um, you know, it is what it is, and I'm excited to get it back because I love, love, love that game. That is probably yeah. one of my favorite Call of Duty games. Yeah. It's still a shame that it so much. I, I don't see it as a $40 game. I agree. It just a ten year old game. I understand they remastered it, they polished it up, but again, twenty five bucks should be about where it's at. Yeah, twenty twenty five bucks. Totally. That's just one guy's opinion. Yep, an old curmudgeon. I do have a hardware request, not really a hardware pick. Hmm. We just yesterday we're recording this on Sunday, so Saturday went on a kayaking float trip in central Missouri down near. Steelville, so about an hour from St. Louis, give or take. And, you know, you see a lot of people with their Bluetooth waterproof speakers and coolers that they turn into big old booming stereo systems and stuff like that. Which, by the way, I did see one cooler that had speakers and stuff in it. Because those coolers are really cool when they do that. It actually had solar panel little solar oh, on the yeah. t- solar on the My top. Man. I'm like, look at that. That's pretty cool. I wonder how much that really affects it. I'm sure it helps it, but um, in the same fashion, where it would be hard to put solar panels on a car and make it efficient enough. Mm-hmm. I wonder, you know, vice versa with like a cooler. You know, I'm sure it's a much smaller battery, but at the same time, I wonder how efficient that is. I would imagine it's very because you're you know you're floating very slow and. You're in the middle of the water, so there's plenty of sun. Yeah. It's not like you're just hanging out in the shade all day. Sure. So I was like, that's a really nice way to do that. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for, you know me, I'm all for that solar energy. Yeah, it was really cool. But I would like for Amazon to come out with a waterproof Echo. That you can bring on a float trip. Bring on a float trip with an FM tuner. That way, if I don't want to bring my phone on the water, I don't have to. I can just use the FM tuner. That'd be awesome. That would be pretty cool. I would say the biggest challenge would be um, getting some kind of internet signal to it. Yeah. Because most of the time, if um, you have a speaker, you connect your phone, and that's how you get Mm -hmm. the internet signal. So I wonder... That's why I said the FM tuner, because you wouldn't need an internet signal then. Mm. But then why make it Amazon Echo? Because then you can take it out of the house and take it with you. Oh, I see. So... At home, it's just your na- just a regular home. Echo. Okay. Then you get ready to go. You just unplug it from the wall, and it's got a battery in there that'll last you, you know, 
12 hours. Six hours, hours 12 hours. I was going to say, yeah. typically, like some of the small speakers we have at work yeah. that are waterproof, um, they last about 10, 12 hours. So I would imagine yeah. that That'd they would be easily, perfect. Yeah. It's got a little FM tuner or something like that. And if you did want to pair your phone up with it, Bluetooth, there you go. Interesting. I think it would work. Hey. I think it would sell. Yeah. I mean... Everything else is IP68 right now. Why can't uh, Amazon Echo? Well, not the essential phone. <laughs> we won't get into that. Which is still not really. St- but anyway, don't need to beat that over the head again. But no, that's that's it. We finished Ozark last night. So which I've also heard good things about. It's really good. It's really good. Who's the main actor in that? Jason Bateman. That's the reason I'd watch it. And Laura Linney plays his wife. It's really good. It, Man, episode 10, the final episode of this first season, some real cringeworthy moments. You're like, oh, God, I didn't see that one coming. Nice. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> there was definitely. Man, it is so good. I, got, oh, I can't say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. Episode 8 is one of those episodes, though, that gives you a little bit of the backstory and does hop around so that's one i definitely recommend you gotta pay attention to that episode okay but the nine and ten man it really finishes strong finishes strong and that's on netflix netflix original excellent Ozark. and pay attention to the little symbols at the beginning of the episode it's like the circle and it's divided in the four sections and there's a symbol in each oh okay like triangle yeah or each quadrant well get technical pay attention to those but look at them quick or pause it because they come on quick and go off quick but it's really good really really good so ozark i know i mentioned it last week but yep watch it netflix so now it's time for this week's beer pick of the week and i believe we can both talk about this one yeah so i saw this in the store today and it kind of raised an eyebrow because for those of you who know, I am quite the fan of Coney Island and their hard root beer and their all their different hard sodas. I'm a soda person. I know it's not the best for you. But they just have a new one that uh, I have never seen before, at least here in St. Louis. And it's the Hard Lemon Lime Twist. And yes, think Sprite. With vanilla. With vanilla, which the vanilla makes it smoother. It does. It's not an overpowering thing, but... Um, I still stand behind Coney Island being one of the better manufacturers for, or brewers, rather. Sorry, just terms that I constantly (laughs) use. But brewers um, for the hard sodas. And I stand behind this one. I gave it a solid four. I couldn't give it any more than a four just for the sole purpose of what it is versus all the other beers out there you right know. yeah it'd be tough to go much further with it. i'd probably go three and a half just because sure i th- to me it's a little too sweet and i definitely understand that a lot of um, sweetness to it yeah totally this is one of those man i really want something sweet but i just want a little you know a little alcohol with it mm-hmm. this would be perfect especially yeah. on these summer days this is absolutely perfect summer days maybe a nice cold glass with just a handful of ice cubes not a whole lot yeah yeah totally but i think it'd be great and uh it's 5.4 abv so super light well not super light but I mean middle of the road yeah we'll say it's a little bit more than your ab InBev products that's true and uh yeah it's um it's clear which i was not expecting <laughs> due to the green and yellow label right and dark bottle and dark bottle. So I was expecting full on like kind of some weird colored Glowing ale. Yellow. Yeah. Yellow Poured it out green. and it looked like a Sprite. It kind of, I about fell over. I was like, well, look it, at that. It had kind of a cloudiness, a yellow, a, like a yellowish kind of sure. hue to it. Like you said, cloudiness to it. So not like crystal clear like you see on, you know, seven up and I love to say Sprite commercials, but you don't really see Sprite commercials anymore. No. Nah. Anyway, if you if you do like Seven Up and Sprite, I hate to say Sierra Mist, you probably <laughs> like this. I would imagine. Yeah, so I don't know. Give it a shot. Yeah, if you find it in your local beer provider, supplier, grocery store, wherever, mm-hmm. check it out. How much were they for six? I think they've dropped in price since I've last seen them, but it was like eight ninety nine, which I guess for a six pack 
can be expensive depending on what you're looking for and what you're buying. I thought it was relatively reasonable. Yeah, for a specialty yeah. creation like this. Yeah, not bad. Like I said, I'd probably do three and a half myself. Totally. Not bad. So that does it for this week's episode. And if you've got any feedback or anything you would like to say, there's always that email you can send us to contact at thetechinformist.com or hit us up on social media. Whether the it's Twitters, the Instagrams, YouTube the YouTube comments, whatever. Untapped. Follow Untapped. us on Untapped. That's, yeah. uh, I'm very prevalent on there as well. Yeah, he's between Instagram and Untapped. That's his two biggest social media presence. Yeah, actually. Right now, <laughs> he, you're, you are on Twitter, but not, not nearly as, as much. F- yeah. Usually what you'll see from you on Twitter is from Instagram. Yeah, that's true. Also... <laughs> I will mention, um, if you do tweet at me, I will receive those notifications. I have most of my notifications turned off, but that specifically I have turned on. Yeah. So I'll get those. Yeah, those are notifications you don't mind getting on all the random BS from all the other places that I had signed up to get or just chose to get the notifications from that I have since canceled. Yep. But that does it. So thanks, everyone, for listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. Check us out next week. We'll be back. Until then, see yourself informed. We're out. Take care.